Welcome back to Master Your Ash. I'm your host, Michael Prisdale, and tonight I will be smoking The Headless Horseman by Ezra Zion. Limited edition 2022, and the cigar was sent in courtesy of Sean T. Thank you very much, Sean. I really appreciate you sending me this. As those of you that follow the channel know, Sean sent over the Headless Horseman right here in this beautiful dark chocolate, six and a half by 52 Toro Extra, along with his Halloween bomb to the channel. And we smoked our first Ezra Zion courtesy of Sean T. So all the props in the world to him for sending along the pumpkin pie and cream, which was fantastic for this year. Thoroughly enjoyed that cigar. And as I said, dark chocolate wrapper, a couple of visible veins here on the Ezra Zion, which you can see in the overhead shot pretty well. I know that traditionally the 2020 or the 2021, I believe that they both had Corojo 99 Rosado leaf as the wrapper. This seems to be a bit darker than a Corojo 99 leaf. Most of the tobaccos are aged between five and 12 years in, in the past. Not sure once again what this particular iteration of the Headless Horseman has as far as the blend goes. We can smell some barnyard, along with a little bit of black pepper and some nice toasty mesquite oak. Nutmeg, baking spices, touch of star anise, black pepper, and some really nice kind of mesquite oak off of the cold draw on the cigar. The initial notes off of the cigar are confectionery notes of rich chocolate brownie, touch of molasses sweetness, along with some beautiful oak, toasted oak, toasted bready notes, as well as some fresh roasted coffee, and just a little bit of that nutmeg clove spice along with some black pepper off the retro hill. Not exactly the most flavorful to start and definitely not the most intense as far as pepper off of the retro hill, but we're gonna smoke this down a little bit, get into the first third a little bit, and we'll be back. Getting through the first third, Every single puff seems to envelop more and more flavor and nuance, and we're slowly picking up steam here. It's not exactly one of those that right out of the gate, it starts with a ton of notes on it. Some underlying notes like the molasses, the chocolate brownie, the baking spices, all very muted. And as we're developing through the first third, I mean, we've basically done the first like half inch, three quarters of an inch here. We're starting to pick up more and more and more. Try not to smoke it too fast because every single turn, I just want more and more flavor. So, so far, all good. Everything's burning very nicely. And I forgot to mention, but I don't know if it shows in the overhead, the RH on the cigar was right at 60 when I went to smoke it tonight. There's been this development and this transition of maple syrup, almost like a, a rich pancake maple syrup. Like, <laughs> it's hard to describe how mapley this cigar really is. It has the cinnamon, nutmeg, clove, baking spices working all on the back end now, and the maple syrup has taken the, the like upfront kind of note. Touch of molasses, and then an increase in white pepper now that has taken over place of the black pepper on the retro hell. To the point where it's stinging on the nostrils. I like the cigar's flavors. I like where the transitions are heading. I just want it to kind of balance itself out now because it seems as though the first inch kickstart the blend and now we're just at this overload of flavor on both ends of the spectrum. There's a ton of sweetness and a ton of pepperiness. Smoking down our Ezra Zion Headless Horseman 2022 limited edition and I'm happy to report that as we've transitioned from the second third into the final third, we have reached that balance that I was asking for. So. All in all, it's been a really nice smoke. The balance has increased. We're getting now just this mixture of molasses, pepper, the rich oak that we got in the first third is back. The allspice, baking spice, everything is working together in perfect harmony. And I'm happy to see and happy to report that this cigar has become a really great smoke. And I get it. You know, those that, those that have reviewed the Ezra Zion Headless Horseman 2021, which are the reviews that I was able to locate, they've all talked at, you know, great lengths about how good this cigar is. And I think that with another six months to a year of aging, the 2022 is also gonna be really good. It reminds me of 
the Viaje releases, where sometimes you get a release that just needs a little bit more time to mellow out and open up, just because of the fact that some of them get shipped really fresh. And it's hard to compare like a cigar that has five to 10 year old tobaccos in it and say that it needs more time than that. But I just feel like sometimes you get cigars that they transition better the longer that they're able to acclimate once they've been sitting in your own personal humidor, in your own personal space. There's like this whipped cream note that has the oak spice to back it up that I really love in this final third. It's one, of, it's one of the best flavors that I've had in a long time as far as harmony and synchrony. And I think that that lends to the pairing that I would recommend for the stick, which is an espresso martini. I, I can't imagine an espresso martini being bad or not just fantastic with this cigar. I think that, you know, you have several ways that you can make an espresso martini. Some prefer the more traditional vodka and vanilla vodka method. Some prefer more of the newer style coffee liqueurs with the emergence of Mr. Black and some of the great products that are available on the market. There's gonna be a really beautiful creme de coco that I plan on using in my Brandy Alexander video that's upcoming and that product alone by itself in an espresso martini is fantastic as well with all the rich vanilla chocolate notes that are found in that liqueur. And that's made by Tempest Fugit, but we'll get into that more when we do the Brandy Alexander video because I don't want to spoil it. And I think that espresso martini coffee with this cigar would go really well, especially if you drink it black like I do. It, you know, if you drink your coffee black, sometimes it can be too acidic for some of the cigars that are out there. But with Ezra Zion kind of leaning more into the sweetness realm, I think that dark roasted coffee would be fantastic with the cigar. Cappuccino, flat white, all of those coffee cocktails, coffee drinks would be a great pairing in addition. Also, for those of you non-alc drinkers that enjoy your sodas, the Coke coffees that are out there, especially the Coke coffee in vanilla or the dark blend, those would all be great pairings with this cigar. As we lean into the final third, there's been this emergence of red pepper to complement the whipped cream, the cedar, the oak notes on it, along with a little bit of like mocha, mocha chocolate latte. And once again, that just lines up perfect with any of your coffee variations, espresso martinis that are out there. It's just a really solid smoke. Is it five pack worthy? Absolutely. And I would recommend a five pack on this stick just because of the fact that you're gonna want some that you can stash away for a couple of years and come back and visit. So I hope to get my hands on a couple of more of these. Thank you all so much for watching, for liking, commenting, subscribing. Special thank you to Sean T. I appreciate your brother for sending this out to the channel for us to review. Thank you all so much for helping to build the community here and grow this community at Master Your Ash. And I look forward to catching you again for another Ezra Zion cigar review.